Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Ted Heisler, and I'm gonna be presenting uh, this morning our submission for the Office of the Future. So the future, many times when we think about the future of the office, we may think of images like these here, kind of cold, sterile spaces that uh, might be something from a sci-fi movie or something that you have, have uh, envisioned that would be a little more antiseptic than, than most of us would want to live in. But really, when we think about uh, the challenge here, the year 2020, it's really not that far off from where we are really today. One of the first questions we ask ourselves is, why do we go to the office? And I think that's been, uh, in many different ways, we've seen the question, why do we need to go to the office? And I think clearly in the last few years, we've found, especially with some of the technology companies that are out there, there's been more mandates. We need to go to the office for a healthy culture and connecting with others in our facilities. We have to have great office space. So we did a little research in preparing for this. Uh, periodicals, um, definitely different white papers, focus groups, workplace strategy blogs. And we decided one great idea would be to pull together a focus group specifically for what we're doing right now. So we pulled together thought leaders in what we do, also some people on the development side, furniture side, workplace strategists, and sped the better part of an afternoon talking about what is the future of the office and what are the hot buttons, especially for the corporate real estate executives that are looking at putting these on the map. What, what do they think is the most important? What we found in looking at the office of the future is really a growing connection to a healthy building solution for all employees. We found that flexibility is key and it's gonna be an important part of every office plan. Then employee, employee engagement is more important than ever. How do we design spaces that give people different types of places to work that they can do their best work? That in, uh, the community, sense of community in the workplace is an ever present need amongst all of us and especially to that next generation of worker. That wellness in the, in the workplace is more and more important as we spend a majority of our day uh, at the office. So when we look at a floor plan, we're talking, uh, we talked a lot about what our focus group said, but we came up with an idea of really different zones that would be appropriate for us to, to work in, in a, on a daily basis. So the first zone is the focus zone. And that zone is really where you do most of your heads down work. Uh, that would be uh, individual work that people would be looking at doing. The second zone is what we consider the quiet zone, much like a library with all the information that we all get on a daily basis with emails and voicemails and, and the uh, amount of information that we have to process, a quiet place where you could go contemplate and have uh, uh, some privacy. The collaborative zone is something that we see today and it's gonna be permeating more of the floor plans in the future, we think, as that next generation of worker demands more collaboration, more innovative space. Now one thing that our, we tasked our design team, one of the things that we find is the most disruptive to the flexibility of space is really walls. And what do you do with those walls? To create space, we all need that acoustical privacy of a private office or a conference room, but we need more flexibility as far as that's concerned. And our design team came up with this, this idea of being able to have walls that would go actually into the ceiling cavity and with a push of a button, you could transform a private office into a conference room where you could do video conferencing, or you could also have other associates meet as a team meeting by pulling in the office uh, as it's animated in the sketch right there. Flexible workstations means, also means different kinds of places that you could actually work. So it may be for some people working at a desk, a traditional desk that moves around 
that's wireless and not tethered to electricity. Or it may be a workstation where you're on a treadmill or bike and being able to do your work in that way. Uh, one thing is for certain, everybody still is gonna be looking at metrics. And from a metric standpoint, with all this kind of fun space in there and amenity space, can we be relevant as far as the square footage per person served in a space like this? No doubt we think that there's gonna be a growing change from workspaces that are individual to more amenity space and more common space, but we still were able to pick up around 150 square feet per person served as an average. So lighting and electrical will continue to shift as well. We think with uh, photometrics, we're able to do a lot more with bringing natural light into an office space. Also, as we challenge ourselves with our mechanical, electrical, and plumbing team, they came up with some solutions that I didn't realize existed today as well. From a standpoint of the electrical, there are uh, low voltage systems for ceiling grids that are available even today so that a facilities person, if they need to change uh, light fixtures around, they can do it without adding any conduits. The actual grid itself is electrified with low voltage, so anybody can do that. From a me mechanical standpoint, we're, th we're thinking also some of those traditional systems that were in place in the past are also going to be changing. Um, our mechanical engineer uh, told us, that I didn't realize, that water can hold 300 times the energy as air. And so it's no secret that some of these water chilled systems, and these are called cold bar systems that are just at the beginning stages of being used today, will be much more prevalent in the future. These cold bar systems would be put throughout the space and give you a radiant heat and cooling solution that'll be significantly more uh, energy efficient than what we see today. Materials will continue to evolve as well, not only from a standpoint of textures and that sort of thing, but nanotechnology is taking off in a huge way. Uh, with nanotechnology, there's a lot of different things that can happen uh, that with these uh, fabrics and finishes some of them are self-cleaning, some of them have embedded LED technology, and we're just gonna see more and more prevalence with nanotechnology in all that we do. So we've talked a lot about some of the factors and some of the finishes in a new space, but how will those spaces look? We think they're not gonna to look too dissimilar to what, uh, what we're thinking today, and definitely not sterile. There'll be a growing uh, attachment to more natural materials and more of a wellness in, in the workplace. Entry lounges will become more collaborative in nature and have great people spaces with more natural light. The open office will continue to evolve into having much more natural light as well, flexibility, lots of glass, and interesting ways to use light internally. The quiet room will be a function of every significant office where there is a place to go and have some quiet decompression time. And with the majority or a big amount of uh, companies out there that are looking at how can we extend our work day and they have an international sales call at eight o'clock in the evening, uh, we think sleeping pods might be in order so you can take that nap during the day uh, and be functioning later in the evening. And no place would be complete without an interactive area. So these interactive areas definitely would be the heart of most organizations. And we think the next generation of worker is going to want more and more of this type of space, places to interact and innovate, because truly, if we really look at research, innovation happens when we all come together. So a place, a workplace in the future, how much should that cost? Well, we tapped one of the leading uh, general contractors in Southern California, Turok, to help us conjure up what that might be. They came up with $119 a square foot. So maybe some of the best and brightest brokers out there could help us figure out how to get that into a turnkey deal. So back to the future. In 2020, we think that uh, 
there's going to be a lot of things that might be similar to what we're seeing today, but definitely advances in a lot of different ways. So we, with the future being as close as it is, we'd encourage you all to, to look closely, uh, to push your design teams to get those futuristic uh, situations pulled into the workplace today so we will have a better and brighter work environment in the future. Thank you very much.